I've been watching this guy on YouTube, um, a Texas high school football coach by the name of Coach Wardlaw. Uh, he's also an astronomy teacher in Texas, has a master's degree in education. And I've been just watching him, kind of following along. His team's in the playoffs, won their first two games, which you would think, you know, two games. But they apparently in Texas, high school football playoffs are six rounds, which is a lot. That's like 18 weeks of football for high school kids, which is a, if they go and they go, they win state and everything, which is wild to me. But the thing that was wild to me, and I've been watching him for a few weeks, is that in his videos, he talks about a great deal of things that happen. And the last couple of times he's been making Saturday videos after the game. And after the game, he always talks about how the uh, how the players have to do um, up-downs for missed assignments, missed tackles, things like that. And it's the entire team has to do it based on the amount of those things, which is which is ridiculous because, well, it's two things that are ridiculous. One, it's collective punishment of a team. And the other thing is it's it's uh, using punishment, using exercise as punishment. Now, corporal punishment is legal in Texas. That means if a teacher wants to hit a student, they can. Uh, but it shouldn't be legal because it's ineffective. And using exercise as punishment is a form of corporal punishment, which means that, yes, what he is doing, and well, he is not the head coach, but what the head coach is doing is perfectly legal. But I do not think it's acceptable for that. And there's a few other things that happened. Apparently in uh, the sub-varsity games a couple of weeks ago, one of the players on his team suffered a catastrophic injury that was so catastrophic that the game had to be basically... Uh, canceled or ended early uh, due to the injury. And I have not seen a single update about that player from him. Um, I did look online and I couldn't find anything about the injury. Uh, a lot of times like sub varsity high school players will get injured and then there won't be anything. Uh, there's been a lot of high school football injuries this year. It's been, it's been wild. Like down in Pennsylvania uh, this year, like within the span of like 10 days, two people had to get airlifted off the football field because of severe injuries. But my problem with high school football coaches that that um, that do this specifically with uh, using exercise as punishment is that it's not setting up those those kids for long term success. When it's it's proven that when exercise is used as punishment, kids will end up having a negative association with that exercise. And then once they're done with their organized sport, um, maybe after high school, maybe after college, maybe after, if they're lucky enough to go to the pros, maybe after that, they won't exercise. And what will happen is they're, they're so used to eating the level of food that they eat to, you know, maintain their, their caloric needs as an athlete, that what happens is they end up becoming extremely fat. Uh, excuse me. And I'm extremely fat, and one of the reasons for it is because, well, I eat too much and I don't exercise. I've been working on that. I actually quit drinking alcohol uh, earlier this year and actually have lost 40 pounds. But when I did Taekwondo back when I was a kid, that was a thing that was done. And it's just like I still have negative connotations with exercise, and I'm like, I'm getting better with it. I'm working on doing some stuff. I've been walking. Um, I don't have a vehicle, so I have to walk a lot of places. Plus, I'm a college student, so I walk from one building to the other building all the time. You know, maybe go from the one building to the student union to the library to another building, stuff like that, which helps. But my other problem with this is that every single time he has a video, you can see the players in the video, which you shouldn't be using. Um, as a teacher, you should never have your students in your videos uh, but as a high school football coach, you are still a teacher for those students. You're teaching them how to play football. And it, it, it incredibly bothers me that every single time he's showing them. Um, now, I understand that if he's showing the film that's like on Huddle, that's a totally different thing. But no, this is film that he takes for his social media videos. He does this day in the life of a Texas high school football coach series. You can watch it on TikTok um, to see what I'm talking about. And it's, it's Monday through Sunday, every day, he's showing it. And it's wild what he does. He'll get to school at 5.30 a.m. He'll start um, start his day like with a workout, which actually, that's kind of cool. If, you, if you're if you a high school coach and you have access to a gym for your students that you can use, 
that's cool. I'm totally cool with him doing that. Um, I actually think like most high schools should allow their teachers and coaches to use the weight room when they can, uh, which is a cool thing. But then on top of that, after that, he gets to school at like five, five thirty, five forty five. He'll um, he'll show what what they do with like the sub varsity teams on the team, which OK, but that's not that's before school. No, it's not. It's first period. Their first period is an athletics period. So it counts towards the number of periods he can teach, which normally if you're a coach, you teach whatever it is. Like in certain districts, I know around here it's four periods a, a day plus a duty. In other districts, it's five periods plus a duty, stuff like that. But nah, that counts. So I'm assuming since he teaches two classes and he has two athletic periods, he has four periods a day. Um, he does that. Then he goes to his class and it's they're on the block system from what I understand. Um, he goes to his class, teaches his class, which, okay, cool. Astronomy. Actually, this is something that I do like that the school offers astronomy. My schools didn't offer astronomy when I was in school. Uh, but then he teaches his class, takes a break, teaches his class again. And then he has another athletics period and he's getting paid a teacher salary plus a coaching stipend. And the coaching time is part of his periods and his duties. And he doesn't have a duty. It doesn't look like he has extra duties for the football team. But like, what is like, is, is high school football that big and that important in Texas that you only want to teach that you, that you literally have a teacher only teach two periods a day. Like what? I'm so shocked. And that also means that those kids, which is a good thing uh, in this case, that would count for their physical education credit which I agree with. And I think any student who plays a sport should get that um, physical education credit for the time that their sport is. So if it's a fall sport, they don't take physical education in the fall semester. If it's a spring sport, they don't take PE in the spring semester, stuff like that. That's something that I just agree with. Um, at least that's what I assume happens is since those kids have athletic periods, that that's their physical education credit. But it's ridiculous that he's using or the head coach is using exercise as a means of punishment and as a mass punishment. I don't know if y'all have seen the meme that says that mass punishment is a war crime. Now, you shouldn't accuse your teacher of a war crime, and I'm not accusing him of a war crime here, but using exercise and exercise as mass punishment is just stupid. Um, and I'm sure there's probably a couple of kids every year after the first game see that happen to them, like, uh, see that happen, and then they're just like, yeah. I quit. This is not okay. Um, or I don't like this. Now I know a lot of kids' parents will be like, no, you can't quit. You have to do the first, you have to do the first season, then you can quit. But like a lot of kids will quit or they'll tell their parents to still go on and not. Like if um it's a it's a ridiculous thing to think that kids, especially high school kids, should be well, anybody should be collectively punished for things like co coaching should be all about making someone better. And generally in coaching, when you're coaching somebody, you say, OK, this is the mistake you made. This is how to improve. And then, then you show them how to improve. And then you say, OK, can you go practice that for me? Uh, like, let's say hypothetically um, uh, wide receiver. Uh, wide receiver had a couple of drops. What you do is you have them do the jugs machine. Uh, with the throw and the football and stuff, or you have them just play catch. You're like, this is how you, you know, how you can get better. I want you to try to do that. And then you offer praise afterwards, which helps so that that wide receiver can be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then they see you use second goals. This is like literally stuff that you learn in an educational psychology class, which um, my college actually offers a minor in coaching. And oddly, it does not require the taking of educational psychology, even though coaching is teaching is pedagogy. So you would think that you would want uh, uh, educational psychology to be taught to the people doing that. But no, it doesn't work. What he's do what they're doing on this team doesn't work. And right now I'm following him because I'm kind of interested to see what happens and see how things go. And uh, I'm kind of interested in seeing some of the stuff. The other thing I... I noticed is that they feed their kids before every game, which is really cool. Um, and I think every high school football program, I, I think every program should do that. But 
they don't feed their kids like a nutritious meal. They'll do like Chick-fil-A, Cane's chicken. It's always fast food. Which I understand you need calories in order to play a sport and blah, 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 all that. But broccoli, cauliflower, have some fruits and veggies. The chicken, the, the, the chicken is, I, I don't disagree with chicken. Chicken is a good source of protein. Chicken, white meat chicken, super good. I disagree with the whole idea of feeding your athletes fast food and feeding these kids free fast food every day. Because between that, they're going to get, they're going to be happy eating the fast food. And then with the collective and using exercise as punishment, they're going to hate exercising. So you're setting these kids up for a lifetime of health issues. Not that football is a safe sport to be played in high school anyway. Um, apparently, if you don't play high school football or just start playing football in college, your risk of CTE decreases by like 42%. Now, your chances of making the NFL also decrease by about 99%. But, like, yeah. We don't want to be giving high school kids CTE and concussions and broken necks and broken legs and all those things. I don't really want to be giving college kids that, but at least they make money now. High school, they don't really make money. I don't know if any high school kids have NIL deals. But, yeah, I just wanted to have some thoughts about that. So, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, don't do anything weird.